Learning check related to aldosterone, I think we'll answer these as we go shortly here. So aldosterone is secreted by the adrenal cortex, stimulated initially by low blood pressure, although there can be other stimuli we'll get to, and directly by angiotensin. This is part of that RAS system, a pathway. And it's going to increase sodium reabsorption by the kidneys, as well as increase potassium secretion. So that's the new piece. This is gonna result in water reabsorption as well, which is gonna follow that sodium and then increase blood volume. So we saw this before in relation to blood pressure regulation. So here is aldosterone, a steroid hormone produced by the adrenal cortex. Hormones is gonna travel in the bloodstream and it's gonna be stimulated one by low blood pressure. It can also be stimulated by high potassium, which kind of makes sense because um, it's resulting in potassium secretion. Last one that can regulate it is high, high, high osmolarity. This is the ratio of salt to water. So it's often gonna be related to low blood pressure, but it's a different stimulus. And we'll see that in the future um, that oftentimes you can have a change in osmolarity without a change in blood pressure. You can have a change in blood pressure without a change in osmolarity. They are different stimuli. So this is going to result in ultimately, and actually let me just some colors here. Um, two of these are going to stimulate aldosterone secretion, osmolarity is going to decrease aldosterone secretion from the kidneys. That makes sense because we don't want to keep more sodium. The pathway along here is through granular cell. Well, it's actually more than one mechanism. It also is through um, baroreceptors which trigger the sympathetic nervous system. Which is both of these are gonna result in renin and then angiotensin production. Long-term blood pressure regulation that we've already talked about because we're altering blood volume. The sympathetic nervous system also is can result in short-term regulation. So vasoconstriction is gonna happen at the same time if our stimulus is low blood pressure. So regardless of whether the stimulus is high potassium or low blood pressure, aldosterone is going to be released and it's going to, I don't want red actually, no red. We're gonna target the cells of the distal convoluted tubule, also the collecting duct. What are we gonna do there? We're going to increase sodium reabsorption and increase potassium secretion. This is responding to this stimulus. We're getting rid of potassium by secreting it it's also going to respond to this. So it can be stimulated by either one of these. Sodium reabsorption is going to increase water reabsorption. How does it do this, you ask? Let's dive into those cells um, and look at them here. So here is an image of aldosterone circulating in the bloodstream adrenal cortex produces this hormone in the bloodstream, it's going to, number one, bind to its receptor inside the cell, cytoplasmic. Why? It's a steroid hormone. So it's going to bind to a cytoplasmic receptor and initiate transcription because that's what steroid hormones do. Of, of the gene of interest. Three is synthesis. So actually 
of the protein, right? That's translation. What protein? Protein pump. Our sodium, potassium, potassium, sodium, ATP pump. This guy. Um, number four in this image, uh, what is, oh shoot. What am I missing here? This is three, four, three and four are really the same. Four also can be the modulation of existing channels. Side note, the new channels is what I've, and pumps is what I focused on. Five is really just the last step then is increased what? Sodium reabsorption, increased potassium secretion. Okay. Again, it could be stimulated by low blood pressure or high potassium levels. Um, and when aldosterone is low, sodium reabsorption in the DCT would not occur much, meaning our urine would stay dilute. We'll look at the whole picture in a bit. Let's do another learning check. Fill in this diagram. I will give you nothing. You can do it. Fine, I'll give you, I'll give you the end result which is going to be um, homeostatic levels of sodium and potassium. Okay, I think you can do it. the distal collecting duct. And what we've done here is describe the signals that cause the release of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex, and then the effect of this aldosterone on the nephron, um, including where this is and the transport mechanisms 